Hi everyone, welcome to part three of the concept map. What we're gonna do in this particular episode is have a look at how to use the content of the concept map to improve your learners' writing skills. The first thing we need is some content. Here were some ideas that some learners put down when they were asked to generate some ideas about what a tractor is. They said a tractor is a vehicle, is an engine. Somebody said it's a torque producer. Somebody said it's a tool for pulling things around a mechanical vehicle. Great, that's all we need for now. Let's put that there. The learners were then asked to generate some ideas around what a tractor has, and these were some of the words that they came up with. A tractor has a drawbar, a three-point hitch, hydraulics, uh, large back wheels, sometimes large front wheels as well. Uh, it has a clutch brake accelerator. It has a differential lock. It has ROPS, that is in the terms of a roll cage uh, to protect people and it has uh, transmission and horsepower. These are all words that the learners generated on the spot. Here were some words that the learners generated around what a tractor does. They said a tractor pulls things, hoes, harrows, tills, uh, a tractor can spread fertilizer, a tractor can excavate, a tractor can lift things, pull things, etc. And finally, the learners were asked uh, where tractors are found, and this is what learners came up with very quickly. They found on farms, orchards, they are found on work sites, excavation sites, and in the end actually the learners came together and they decided that they found almost anywhere where there's labour intensive jobs. So anywhere where uh, you need lots of people to do things, a tractor can do that more efficiently, and so therefore anywhere where you have heavy labour intensive jobs you might find a tractor. So that's it, we've generated our content, and let's have a look at what we can do with that now. Now the concept map is more than just a structured brainstorm, although it is that. It also has multiple levels of complexity, and I'll just share with you what one of these is. The four tags, is, has, does, and found, allow the learner to not only uh, structure their thinking, but to categorize their thinking. I'll give you an example. Uh, when we use the tag is, what we're doing is we're classifying the object. So a tractor is uh, a vehicle or a tool, really, a tool to, to do a task. So we're classifying what that is. If we look at has, has provides a description. So now we're describing the object. A tractor has big wheels, small wheels, and so on and so on, three points, all of those things. So we're describing it. And then we move down to does, does is a dynamic, that is what does it do? We've classified it, we're describing its features and now we're talking about what it does. And then finally if we move over into found, found is location and that really situates the object within its environment. And the idea is that these four things all help the learner conceptualize that object and develop a sort of a schema for thinking about and attaching new information to. So it's gonna help the learner not only uh, think about the object, but learn more. It provides a framework for the learner to attach new information to. So that's where we're heading from here. So the idea is the learners have written the concept map, filled it out, and they've got all their words there, and now what we want them to do is write a single sentence based on each of the prompts. So a single sentence for is, a single sentence for has, does, and is found. And the idea is that the learners can see the spelling words. So for example, I might have written this up on the board, or the learners might have written it in groups. And the idea is they look at those words that are in the is quadrant, and they have to write a simple sentence. And it will depend on the literacy skills of your learners about how complex that sentence or sentences are going to be. Uh, most of the groups that I've worked with have quite low literacy levels, so one sentence is sufficient at this point. So the idea is they look at those words, and they have to create a sentence. Now I have a sentence here that uh, some students wrote in class based on the concept map. A tractor is a large mechanical vehicle designed to produce and transfer torque to a wide range of tasks. Now that's a pretty complex sentence. Uh, there's a learner in that group obviously who knows about torque and so on, um, but however some sentences will be really simple and that's okay. For example, uh, a tractor is a large mechanical vehicle designed to pull or push a range of implements. And that's absolutely fine. In fact, even that's pretty good, I think, uh, from what I've seen. So sentences just have to use those words and are very simple. Let's move on to has. Here's what they put together, working in a group. Most tractors have a hydraulic system connected to a three-point hitch designed to attach implements. 
I think that's pretty good. Uh, so that's what the learners put down as their first sentence. And of course, that's a pretty complex sentence. Other learners, particularly if they're working by themselves, might not do that. It might be a very simple sentence. They might select some keywords from the concept map and just use those. So now they move to sentence number three and quadrant number three. Uh, what a tractor does, which is the dynamic. Here's what the learners in that same group put together. Tractors do heavy jobs, labor intensive, in brackets, such as hauling, plowing, tilling, and excavating. And so they've taken those words directly from the concept map and put them together in the form of a sentence. I think that's pretty cool. Moving on to the last one, that was uh, where tractors are found, and that's the location, really situating a tractor within its environment. And this is what the learners wrote. They wrote, uh, tractors are found on farms, orchards, roads, airports, in almost any area where heavy lifting is required. I think that's pretty good too. The learners are beginning to think about what tractors do and where they might be used and so on. Now, once learners have written those four sentences, uh, I congratulate them. That's great work. That goes in their books. And there's a couple of things I like to do with that. The first thing I like to do is to allow them to continue to elaborate on those sentences throughout the remainder of the course. So what we'll do is we'll get those sentences written into a Word document on the computer. Uh, that's the preferable thing. And what will happen is they'll continue to update those sentences as they go on. And they'll add new sentences. So as they learn more and more about what a tractor is, that first sentence will become more elaborate. They'll add to it. They'll tweak it. Maybe they'll add an extra sentence and so on. And they'll do that for each of the four sentences or each of the four quadrants, I should say. So I have uh, a couple of sentences eventually around what a tractor is, what it has, what it does, and where it's found. And what I really like to do is over the course of the program, maybe uh, it's two weeks where we're looking at tractors on and off, I would want them each to write a paragraph. So there'll be a paragraph around where a tractor, or what a tractor is, what it has, what it does, and where it's found, and so on. And well, they'll continue to work on that paragraph as we go on. So we've started from generating words in terms of a brainstorm, you know, getting them down, writing a simple sentence, and then moving into elaborating that sentence and finally turning it into a paragraph. Now the final thing I like to do if we're going to keep doing that is once they have four paragraphs, which is pretty uh, amazing for some of these learners and they're feeling pretty good about this, is I get them to write an introduction. And the introduction is very simple. You know, this, is, this report is about tractors, on farms or something simple or it might be more elaborated and better than that and then I like them to write a summary as well and a summary just sums up the context of what's in that uh, particular report. So in the end they've got six paragraphs an introduction, moving into a classification and then a descriptive paragraph, a dynamic paragraph that describes what a tractor can do, a location paragraph describing where it is where it's situated in its environment, and finally a summary. And in the end, those learners are really proud of the writing that they've done and continue to update it. And the wonderful thing is once you've got those uh, paragraphs in place, you can begin to teach the learners about other types of paragraphs that might be good. For example, a compare and contrast or a um, explanation type paragraph. And you can slot those in there as well. And perhaps we'll uh, add on some more resources about how you might do it. Now, writing things down uh, really helps the ability of learners to retain and recall this information. It's good fun and it's highly satisfying. All the best.